Praise God. Thank you so much for leading us in that. We do plan to have another song inside here, and it's such a beautiful day. It looks like we should be able to sing outside at the end of our service as well. Um, one of the joys of this day is getting to hear from our outgoing Sunday school superintendents. Now, I'm not sure if you're actually um, kind of ending your, your ministry this year. Be, be, um, I'm kind of forgetting where, where that leader, <laughs> you know, if we had a bit of conversation about you guys ex extending that term a little bit, but, but it, is, it, it, is, did, it did end, did it? Okay. But his did not. Okay, there's where my confusion was. But we appreciate so much the fact that we're going to get to hear from, from Earl and Ross. Earl, with a, a time for the children. Um, of course, we, because of this COVID season, we can't have a group of kids at the, the front. But the service is being streamed. And so we're hoping that there are some kids, trusting there's some kids at home um, either listening now or will be watching later. So invite Earl to come first, and then, and then Ross, and then I believe we will have another, um, another song of, um, of thanksgiving and praise. So Earl, I invite you to come, and then, then Ross follow. Good morning. My theme verse, which is going to be, I'm going to say it now, the theme verse, because I'm going to have some comments, and all that are my theories, and then I'm going to end with a little children's story. So, and as I do this little skit, then you should try to remember this verse. And it is, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. I think I forgot my notes. Well, nobody said you have to be perfect. Okay. I always like history, science, and this is the first true history book because it starts with the beginning, and I think it's the most important verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the story of creation in the Garden of Eden has always really intrigued me. And it says in Genesis 1, 31, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And I just want to take us into how really good. And I think it's very important that we teach our children because they are not taught this in school. They're taught a totally different other story. But I just want to really emphasize this morning at how good and how perfect this was. Genesis 2.15, and the Lord God took man into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And that's where he made a woman from his side, the ribs, not from his head or from his feet, but from his side. So that the woman, although she is total opposite from the man, together they are equally made in God's image. Totally equal. It also says, and just think about this. Sometimes you might wonder why this verse is in here. But Genesis 2.25 says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Perfect perfection. If you think about it, how perfect and how accurate God was in making the humans and how comfortable he wanted them to make them. He made them that they didn't need clothes. Like, 
This morning, we all put coats on like we wouldn't even think of going out without clothes on. Sometimes what's really hot might be different, but, you know, but it was totally perfection. It couldn't have been any better. And then very shortly after, the deception came in. And, you know, I've often wondered, you know, why did Eve, you know, when this snake started to talk to her, why didn't she go away? But we have to remember how perfect everything was. The animal kingdom was totally perfect. Because it says in um, Genesis 1, I think it is, 29, And God said, Behold, I have given unto you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be meat. And he also gave that same blessing to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air. So everything was eating plants. There was no need for fear of anything because you weren't going to be eaten by a bear. A snake wasn't going to eat a bird. It was, I'm not sure about the ones in the ocean, how they survived, but but on the land. It was such perfect harmony. So I might be thinking it might not have been strange for an animal to talk with Adam and Eve. I don't know. You can think about that yourself. Because it seemed, according to what we're reading in the scriptures, she didn't have any fear of talking with this snake. And then we know the deception. And another part of my, uh, I want you to think about, are we cursed or blessed? Which is, are we more cursed or more blessed? Because then it, when, God, after the fall, God started giving commands and punishments. And then he said to the man, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And I never really even caught that on until just when I was doing this. Why would he curse the ground for our sake? Already, God is putting a blessing in there. God would rather bless than curse. And we have now thorns and thistles, and it shall bring forth thorns and thistles. And we know even today we still have to struggle with those same thorns and thistles. And uh, we have to work by the sweat of our brow and to uh, till for the land. But now I just want to bring over a blessing in this current situation. In the past 20 years... Food production has increased one and a half times faster than global growth. Right now, we have enough food to feed 10 billion people. And as of October 2020, the world population was 7.8 billion. But that doesn't include the ones born on the weekend. (laughs) And, uh, you know, and uh, we might think of the present day, this... COVID-19, is it a curse or is it a blessing to us? I don't know. But in uh, Matthew 24, Jesus says, you know, when we therefore see the desolation, the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. And if we look in Daniel, Daniel, it says, um, he said, Daniel 12, 9, he says, Go thy way, the words are closed up and sealed till the end of time. And Daniel and Revelation are very similar. But one thing in Revelation, it's, it says in Revelation, it says, Revelation 22, 10, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And there are many theories out there. Is this the time of the hand? I believe it is. My grandmother, 40 years ago, said that she quoted these same verses and said the time was at hand. And I believe in Scripture, it's so written that the time is at hand for everyone at whatever stage of life they are in. In fact, pandemic is a modern word, but the word plague and pestilence is mentioned at least 127 times in Scripture. Global life expectancy has increased five and a half years between 2000 and 26. It's the fastest increase since the 1960s. 
and is right now about 107, no, whoops, not 179 years, the average life expectancy is still about 79 years. And here in this, if you ever go, I really encourage you, get your children involved in the answer, uh, Creation Museum or whatever comes out from that organization. It's got some very interesting reading in there. And there, they, because they might be faced with the fact, are there any children in here? Do you really believe that Noah and all these people could live 900 years? So anybody in here that believes they couldn't live that long? Well, here in this book, I found some interesting things. In one sense, most of the substance of our body really doesn't continue to get older during our life. Great many of our body parts are constantly repairing and replacing themselves. In fact, similar to the cells lining our... Um, some cells replace every four days, and some every 90 days. In fact, it is believed that little or nothing in our body is more than 10 years old, which I find hard to believe when I try to get up in the morning. <laughs> so, yes, it, it, God holds life. God is the author of life. And uh, just the whole thing, yeah. Last year, about a year ago, I'm, I was on the, I think it was the Mental Homes Committee, and the one speaker, what she said, really kind of bothered me a little bit at the time. But she says, you know, the way things are going in this life, or in this world, her daughter is in her early 20s and thinking about getting married, but she just does not know if she wants to bring children into this world. And I thought to myself, do they not know that God is the author of life and he, it's in his control on who is born and who dies. And then what happens less than six months later, you know, it's, everybody's scared they're going to, everybody's going to die, right? It's amazing how God can change things. And, then, uh, and that also, in our Sunday school lesson, it was also brought up when we are studying the life of Joseph. Joseph got married just before the seven years of famine, and yet he trusted God that there was going to be enough for his family. So I think we should all just trust that God is going to bring us through all this. Okay. And now I'm going to begin my story for the children, and it's going to begin with me coming, or it's going to begin with an old man coming out of that house, knocking on the door of a selfish woman. old man was traveling and he was getting hungry so he walked up to the store of a house and in this house lived a woman who was rather selfish. He knocks on the door. What do you want? <laughs> well, I'm very hungry and I would like to eat a meal with you. I haven't eaten for two days myself. In fact, my house is completely empty. There's not one scrap of food in my house. Oh, the old man says, that's totally okay. In my pocket here, I have a stone. It's a blessed stone. And with this stone, I'm going to cook you a meal. Oh, ooh. This kind of perked the woman's curiosity. The old man said, would you, I know you said you don't have nothing in the house, but is there any chance you could have a pot and a spoon and maybe a bit of water? The woman said, yeah, I would have that. I can get you that. Um, oops. That wasn't part of the script. <laughs> oh, yes, I do have a pot and water. The old man drops in his stool. Not bad, but 
It's a little bit bland. The last time I made it, I had a little bit of salt in it, but I know you don't have anything in the house. Oh, I might have a little bit of salt. That's a little better, but I really think the last time I made this, I think it had a little bit of pepper in it, but I know you don't have anything in the house. Oh, I have a little bit of pepper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's getting much better, but you know, I know you don't have anything in the house, but I did have some carrots the last time I put this in here. Oh, I have some carrots in the cellar. Chup, 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 chup. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, yes, I think the last time though, I had a little bit of celery, and it still lacks a little celery, but I guess it's going to have to do because you don't have. I know your house is completely empty. Oh, I do have a little bit of celery. Went to the refrigerator and got some celery. Chop, 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 put it in there. And by this time, the woman was really getting intrigued. Is there anything more you need? Well, I know you don't have anything, but you know, a little bit of squash would really help this out. Oh, I can get some squash in the garden. Runs out, brings in a little squash, chop, 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 in it through the goes. Very, very tasty. Just lacking a little bit of peppers. Green peppers would be good, red if you have them. But I know you don't have anything in the house. So I do actually, I do actually. She quick ran again, is there anything else you need? She said, well, you know, I know it's too much to ask for you being your house is completely empty, but you know, the last time I made that, I just had a little bit of beef in there. Oh, I got some leftover beef. She ran into the, ran into the, uh, ran into the, uh, fridge and got a little bit more beef and they put it in there, mixed it in there. Uh, this, uh, hmm, yeah, that's right about perfect. Do you have any bowls? Yeah. And after Grace, you know, and as they had conversation, they began to speak about each other and they had a good conversation. They were talking about all the wonderful things, how God has blessed them. All these wonderful fruits that we can grow on the variety of food we have. You know, can you ever think about all the variety of food? We're not just, we just don't eat just potatoes. Did you know God could have made us that that was the only thing that could grow? God could make the earth covered with potatoes when he made it, but he filled it with vegetation. In fact, I think the fall colors right now are about the most beautiful I have ever seen. And our gardens are bountiful, but we have all these good fruits. And you know, one time when I was with my Sunday school students and I was asking them, you know, what, what are their favorite vegetables? And, you know, of course, carrots, peas, beans, all that came up. And one even mentioned Brussels sprouts. So um, it's a variety for everything. And then after the flood, God also said that Noah was, or what was that? No, but yeah, all the wonderful food we have to eat and the vegetable, vegetables, okay, I've got to get my notes. Okay, yes. Okay, yes, of all the, you know, all this favorite fruits and vegetables that we can eat, this also includes popcorn, peanut butter, strawberry, jam, jelly beans, and apple, or pumpkin pie. Whipped cream. I think that comes after, after the flood that that was allowed. Because <laughs> after the flood, we were allowed to have milkshakes, <laughs> hot dogs, and hamburgers. And, and uh, anyway, the woman was really amazed, and she thinks. And as the old man left, she said, and to think, he did it all with a stone. <laughs> 